This is David Black, and today we're going to learn how to use Sculpt GL, a free online 3D modeling tool. It allows you to create complex character models starting with a virtual ball of clay. You have a series of tools that allow you to push and pull and drag the clay around. It's very intuitive to learn and quite fun. Let's get started. To open Sculpt GL, we'll type in the name Sculpt GL into our Google search. And then the first choice that comes up here says Sculpt GL, a WebGL sculpting app by Stéphane Genier. That's the one we want. So go ahead and click on that. It will load in the program, which looks something like this. What you see is kind of an orangish salmon colored ball of clay. There are menus across the top that you can use for adding objects to the scene or for importing and exporting files, changing the camera angle and so on. You can even work with a pressure sensitive tablet. Over here on the right hand side, you have your major menus. Rendering and topology we'll talk about later on, but for now let's look at sculpting and painting. And then it says tools and you have a pull down menu. Right now the brush tool is what's selected, but there are many other tools available here. Just to show you the brush tool, if you come here and just hold down your mouse and draw, it pulls out the polygons of the model. Now if you want to rotate the model around, you just point to the side here, hold down your mouse and then drag. So I'm making a very bad nose. I can also do Control Z, not Command Z, and undo. For our first model, we are going to create an alien humanoid. One of those gray aliens that are so famous from all the UFO movies and incidents and encounters and so on. So to do that, we first have to make the head and the head is not spherical. That's the first thing to learn about 3D modeling. You're starting with a sphere. Please don't keep it a sphere. And then please make sure you look at all sides of the model as you're creating it. So I'm going to use the drag tool to begin with. And it comes out here being a fairly large circle. I'm actually going to make it even larger. You notice over here there are tools. The radius changes the size. If I want to move in and out on the sphere, I can just take two fingers and push on my trackpad. What I'm going to do then is look at this and holding my mouse down here, pull out a chin. I can move this to the side and see the chin's coming out. If I need to, I can kind of bring it out further. These gray aliens have long pointed chins and kind of bulbous heads. I'm going to bring out the side here a little bit too. I'm rotating this underneath so I can pull out the bottom of it. Now if at any time I don't like what I'm seeing, I can edit undo or I can use the smooth tool which acts kind of like an eraser. This is looking a bit too much like a human so far. So let's alienize him. You'll also notice that as I do something on one side that is being mirrored on the other side. That's because if you look over here, I have symmetry turned on. And you want to keep that turned on as long as possible. If I've got bumps that I don't want to see, I can change this to the smooth tool, which is right here. I've got the intensity turned up quite a bit and the radius fairly small. So I'm turning the radius up and then as I go onto the model and start painting, it starts smoothing the polygons. Okay, now working back and forth between the smooth and the drag tool, I can this, get this to be basically the shape that I want. As you can see, this works very much like a virtual ball of clay. Okay, I like this shape. I think it's what I want for the alien. I do want to create just a little hint of a nose. And so I'm going to go to the brush tool, which you already saw. And again, you can change the radius and the intensity of it. I'm just trying to create a little ridge that comes down the center here. Maybe a little bit more prominent than that. And then I'm going to create some brow ridges that go across. Now this doesn't look really great. That's where the smooth tool comes in. I'm going to turn down the radius. Now I would like to create some eye sockets so that I can place eyeballs in it. To do that we'll need to be on the brush tool and then click on the box that says negative. 
I'm turning up the size of it. And then what happens is if, if you use negative, it pushes in instead of pulling out. I'm trying to make this eye socket basically almond shaped. And then I can use the smooth tool to soften the edges a bit. To create a mouth, I'm going to choose the crease tool. What it does is create a very thin indented line. I've got the radius turned down so it's quite small. I'll even make it tinier. And the intensity up pretty high. Now these aliens always have just like a thin slit for a mouth. It's perfectly horizontal. As I go over it, it's carving in a little bit deeper each time. And I'll put just a little bit of a corner on it here. That's a bit deeper than I want. So, okay, I'm going back to the smooth tool. I'm going to turn down the intensity because I want this to be a fairly light effect. And then just go over it slightly. Now, I was seeing some pixelation there. It looks like this model needs to be turned up in terms of its resolution. It's not got the detail that I want. To do that, you go to Topology. Open up the little uh, arrow here. What we want to do is turn the resolution up from 150 to maybe something like 300. Now, keep in mind that that will greatly increase the size of the model, but it will also give it a lot more detail. So once you have it chosen, choose Remesh. Takes it a moment, but now you're going to have a lot more detail in your model. I'll go back now to my crease tool and let's create a little bit more detail here in the mouth. Okay, this is looking pretty good. Next, let's add the eyeballs. So to do that, I'm going to go ahead and go to Scene and choose Add Sphere. Now when it does that, it makes just one sphere and that sphere is now currently selected. So the model I was working on has turned kind of a darker brown color. But the sphere is too large. I need to shrink it down. So let me show you how to use what's called the multi-transform tool. If I go to the toolbar and choose transform or choose E on the keyboard, it switches to this tool. I can drag on any of these arrows to move it in different directions depending on which axis, the x-axis, y-axis, and z-axis. If I want to resize the entire thing, I point to this outer ring, which turns yellow, and then I can hold down my mouse and drag it in. That's basically a universal resize. These eyes are going to be fairly big. Okay, let's rotate this around a little bit. But they're also not going to be spherical. So to change the basic shape of an object, you point to these little cubes. Those are the resize tools. So I'm going to stretch this up on the y-axis. Okay, but it also needs to be rotated, and so these rings are different rotational axes. This will have to be rotated along the z-axis, which is the blue ring here. So if I hold my mouse down, I can rotate it a little bit. It's also in the head a little bit too far. So I'm going to pull it out on the z-axis. It's a bit large. So shrinking it down slightly, I'm going to push it into the head. Ooh, it's disappearing. So let's pull it out. Now I'm going to push it into the head. Moving things around in three dimensions and getting them lined up and rotated is always kind of an exercise in patience. These aliens have kind of large, flat, black eyes. About like that. Now, having gone through all of this trouble, it'd be a shame to have to do this all over again. So what I'm going to do is duplicate this eyeball, move it to the side, and then I'll have to rotate it just on one axis to get it back in place. Now, as far as I know, that there, there is not a flip command available in Sculpt GL. If you know of one, or if Stefane adds one, I'd love to see it. To duplicate this, I go to Scene, and I choose Copy Selection. All right, doesn't look like anything happened, except for the eyeball went gray. But 
there is a duplicate that was created. All I have to do is move it to the side. It puts it in exactly the same spot. Now I have to rotate this around to get it in the opposite position. Okay, that's pretty good. Okay, the next step is let's add a neck and a body. So to do that, I go up to Scene, and to make a neck, I'm going to start out with a cylinder. Now, where is the cylinder? If I turn this around, the cylinder is actually in kind of a good position for the neck already, but not exactly. So I'm going to go to our toolbar, choose transform and then let's move this neck around a little bit so I can see what I'm doing a little bit up and down I can rotate it a little bit but before I rotate this I want to make sure it's got the right size and shape so this is too thick of a neck for one of these gray aliens they have long skinny spindly necks let me go ahead and rotate this now so somewhere about like that would be a good location for his neck. Now if I want to, I can join this neck in with the main head. To do that, I hold down Shift on the keyboard and click on both objects so they both turn the light orange color. And now I can go up under Scene and choose Merge Selection. Now I'll go ahead and create another sphere to make a body. The sphere is too big but I'll turn on the transform tool and move it so it's down where a body should be say about here and then I can use the drag tool to start creating the shape that I want I'll zoom ahead here and then show you the finished product so there's another tool I'd like to show you here now that I have arms pulled out in the body shape about where I want it and that is the inflate tool. It's the second one down right under brush and what it does is that if you kind of draw around an area it will inflate it like a balloon. Now I'm creating these arms in what's called a T-pose. That is the arms straight out to the sides with the hands down. Okay now to create the hands what I can do is inflate the ends here or even create a couple of spheres and then pull out the hands from there. Let's do the spheres. So scene, add sphere. Where did it go? It's inside the head. So if you use the transform tool, I can pull it out. We'll shrink it down. Okay, now, if the hands are down, the thumbs are gonna come out in front. So I will use the drag tool, but quite a bit smaller, drag out a thumb. Oh. It's got symmetry turned on. At this point, I need to turn it off. So I uncheck the box for symmetry. Now, since I'm having such trouble getting this in the right position, it might be good if I could somehow change the overall viewpoint of the camera. To do that, I can come up here to camera and choose one of the preset options here, like from the front. And then I can also tell it to turn off perspective and go to an orthographic view. I'm going to use the inflate tool a little bit, making the ends of these fingers just slightly bulbous, like in ET. ET phone home. And now having it done, I need to duplicate this for my right hand. Okay, I've got the hands. Now I'll go ahead and work on doing legs and feet and I'll show you the final model in just a moment. Okay, here's our final alien model. As I rotate around here, I deliberately made his legs long and skinny and then also long and skinny feet. I used the negative on the inflate tool to make his arms even skinnier, but I still wanted to show a little bit of musculature. The hands are not perfectly identical because I had to um, kind of rotate them and show the top side for the bottom side. But overall, I like this. Final step here before I go any further with him is I'm going to merge him together and then save the model. 
So holding down shift, I'm going to select the hands and the head, which is already merged with the neck. With everything selected, I'll go to scene and choose merge selection. Now the entire model is one object. Okay, now let's go ahead and export this model. I can save the SGL file so I can open this up again in SculptGL, or I can save this out as an OBJ, a polygon model, or an STL. So at this point, I'll save the Sculptress or the SculptGL file, which I just did. And now I'm saving the OBJ also. Now when it saves it, it goes out as your mesh and then some number and puts it into your downloads folder. From there, you'll have to rename it and then put it where you want to permanently save it. Now this is as far as I'm going to go on this video today, but you can see we've looked at pretty much all of the tools. The final step on this model is going to be to use the paint tools to create a texture. I hope you can see the possibilities for all of the kinds of 3D models that you could create for your science media projects. Through this project, I would have students demonstrate their knowledge of the characteristics of life by looking at the actual NASA exoplanet database and then designing an alien that might fit a particular planet. You could also bring in models of dinosaurs or woolly mammoths or other types of extinct life and then add details like supports and bases and other features that would prepare them for 3D printing. From that you could create a virtual museum of extinct life forms. Or you could have students create models of viruses or other microbes and create a microbe mini museum. The possibilities here are endless. In our next video, we'll learn how to use the painting tools to create textures by painting directly on the model. I hope you enjoyed learning how to use the basics of SculptGL. Thank you for listening and keep on learning.